security judge saying, tell the world, Johnny, tell them, Johnny, that I joined up, man, I'm, I'm a victim of people's domestic violence, and yes. I, you know, it's a fair fight. It sees how many people believe or side with you. About six years ago, um, uh, Ms. Hurd made uh, uh, some quite heinous and disturbing criminal acts um, against uh, me that, uh, that were not based in any species of truth. It's Amber Laura Hurd. I am here because my ex-husband is suing me uh, for an op-ed I wrote. I, um, I st struggle to have the words. I struggle to find the words to describe how uh, painful this is. Welcome to Popcorn Planet. I am Andy Signor. Amber Heard is despicable. And we got more evidence for you to prove it. And I need your help sharing this. This comes in courtesy of Mr. Christopher Melcher. Thank you so much, sir, for bringing more to us. My God, Christopher, our video yesterday blew up. Thanks to all these people. I hope you got a lot of followers on, on Twitter. Did you get some? Oh, yeah. The, it, the support's been great. And I've been taking this, this last week uh, easy and enjoying going through and doing these long-form threads so that everyone in the community knows you know some of these details and putting them all together in one place but then also people who are new to this and looking into like who's right and what's going on hopefully they can get all of this information that all of us have been putting out there to understand the facts and how amber has abused johnny and now what we're going to see abused the legal process dude this one's awful it, 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 it her parents are exposed it just exposes her to to no end i want to make sure we break this down this is a big one it goes back to 2016 the restraining order christopher's been doing a lot of this work please if you haven't already go follow him over on twitter at ca underscore divorce you can get a lot of these firsthand but so happy to break these down all right christopher set this up what's happening here so to me, this is an abuse of the process, of the legal process, also a further abuse of Johnny. And I want to walk through how she tricked a judge to give her a restraining order in 2016 and why the media was there. And, you know, if this can happen to Johnny Depp, this can happen to any of us. And unfortunately, I see this in my divorce practice with attorneys using tactics like this. So I want to break down and go through how in the world she got a restraining order against him when we're seeing the evidence is, is that she was the one that was responsible here, not him. So we go back in time to 2016. Mm -hmm. She had just filed for divorce and her attorney sends a letter to Johnny's attorney that we have here saying, you know, hey, a, a divorce has been filed. Allegations are being made uh, in this letter against Johnny by Amber. And but it says in here, we are not seeking a restraining order. We, we, we want to keep it quiet. We don't want to go to the media. We could have served him at the premiere personally, like we saw this other, you know, actress served. Olivia recently. Wilde, right? Just gotten. Yeah, exactly. And so we're not going to do that. We have not yet sought a restraining order. And but, you know, we do want to resolve some stuff. We want a bunch of alimony. We want attorney's fees. We want access to all three penthouse. We want the dogs. We want the Range Rover. So this is the letter May 24th, 2016. And two days later, Johnny is in Spain. So he's gone to Spain for this movie premiere. It's Alice uh, through the Looking Glass, looking glass part two, out. yeah. And it's his daughter's birthday. His mom had just died three days earlier. He's in Spain and he gets his lawyer, Laura Wasser, gets this notice. And there's been some discussion about, well, did she get notice? Yeah, she did get a voicemail at 9.45 a.m., May 26th, that Amber's going to court May 27th at 10 a.m. So 23, less than 24 hours of notice. And this is all that she was told. So it's not like, and, and this is the way it works. It's not like, here's all my allegations, all my proof. No, all I'm telling you is date, time, and place, and I'm going for a restraining order, and I want the Range Rover and penthouse. 
And so Johnny's in a different country, different time zone. He has no idea what's going on. There's absolutely no way for him to defend himself. And Amber would know that. So all right off the beginning, it's a gigantic setup of Johnny. So this is Laura Wasser saying, look, the guy, you know, my client's in Spain. Right. And, and Laura explains in her declaration that she had attempted to work this out with Amber's attorney offered like, hey, why don't our clients just both stay away from each other? My client's in a different continent. There shouldn't be a problem here. But then what happens is, boom, runs into court asking for this restraining order. Now, like I say, a lot of stuff going on in Johnny's life at that point in time. So there's no way this guy has any opportunity to respond. He's on tour for this movie, promotional tour. His mom just died three days ago. It's his daughter's birthday. He's now at the premiere of this whole of this movie. Uh, it's just awful. And even if Amber was correct that he did all these things, she's not in danger because right. he's in Spain. Right. And, and all theatrics and, is what this looks like. That's right. And Johnny's attorney is saying, hey, you know, we can work this out. Now, here's what's key is that the way that this process works in Los Angeles is, is that you submit the paperwork. The judge takes it in chambers, meaning the judge's office and reads it and come and the clerk comes out and hands you either grant or deny. You don't argue these to the court. We don't bring our clients to court. We, we often just send a runner down there and file the papers and wait wait till you know the afternoon and see what happened so there's no reason to for us as lawyers to go there there's no reason for our client to go there but and she's there key, with her attorney doing it just for, again theatrics she goes there amber with her attorney in person who's completely unnecessary and who's also there it's the media how would the media know because the court clerk could not have leaked it because the clerk doesn't even know this is happening. It's not a noticed motion. It wasn't on, on the court's calendar. They just showed up and went, boom, here's our papers. I want to be heard. So the court couldn't have leaked it. And Johnny knew about it, but he's certainly not going to leak it. The only one left is Amber's knows, side right? to leak it. And so she's then, the media shows up in force. They're seeing her you know, go to the court, walk out of the court, the victim, and look at right here, 110. This is, this is, there's, there's a main entrance to the court that you can see Amber walking out of. This is the big public entrance. You do not use this when you're the high profile figure. And in LA, we have high profile figures going to court all the time. There's a side entrance. There's an underground entrance. You can coordinate with the bailiff's office for all of these access so you're not, your client isn't having to do the perp walk or do all this stuff. This was done on purpose. There's no reason to use the, this highly publicized known public entrance and exit to the building. So to me, clearly she leaked it. Clearly she stages it. Now, when she walks out with the restraining order in hand, She's literally um, she's holding got, it. Oh my God. <laughs> she's got a big bruise. And, yep. and if you go to the next one where the image is, you can see now the bruise. So this is her walking out of court May 27th, 2016, with a very visible bruise on her upper right cheek. And so, and, you know, embarrassed, you know, it, this is, this is the, the, the image that was then broadcast worldwide yep um and so the next now, day next day with the probably the exactly the amica cream <laughs> yeah this is her the next day and i selected this photo because there's, there's a whole bunch of them it's probably paparazzi taking it but i mean you know you have two different shots and this is rocky pennington with her the next day very, very happy, by the way. Certainly, I guess she feels very protected by this piece of paper now, the, the restraining order. But look, I mean, there's no way that that, that magically healed in 24 hours. Correct. So and we she's know even, that this was the doesn't even look step. like she's wearing makeup. I mean, I'm sorry. I know she keeps trying to say, oh, she's always putting on makeup. But no, that's, that's not makeup right there. Yeah. That, that's a very high quality and, and what's posted on there's a pretty high resolution image. And yeah, there, there's no way that that matches. Rocky so, Pennington, who's no longer her friend, also we found out in the recent trial. 
But so here they are all yucking it up outside the courtroom. Okay, yes, exactly. We, we, here it comes. It, but it gets it keeps going. Yeah. So so Johnny at, on the day of May twenty seventh, when this this hearing is is you know scheduled, he reaches out to Amber's dad, and he's like, "What in the world is going on? She's dragging my name. You know, if she wants a divorce, fine. I, d I don't really want a divorce, but if that's what she wants, fine. Why is she doing this to me?" The dad responds back, the lawyer told her she had to or she would have no place to live in 30 days. Johnny responded back saying, that is ridiculous. I told her she could stay as long as she wanted to. That, that you know, he, he's saying, I'm not forcing her out of anywhere. So there's no way that she would have believed that she had to go. And there's also really no connection between the restraining order and, and needing a place to live. That That's a financial issue. The, Johnny owned the place, so he can't really be kicked out of his own place. So she didn't disclose to the court that it was his penthouse. Um, so again, there, there's no logical connection here. And especially when Johnny's saying like, you live as long as you want. Yeah, I love penthouse. this too. It's like, dude, my wedding, my effing wedding ring is still on me. I has has not taken it off because I love her. It is coming off now. What an effing knife to the back. I'm so disappointed and so hurt. It's just too much. Later, brother, feel better. He's still being nice to the dad, but sort of calling out the absurdity that we've all seen Amber do, which is to stage and create create these crazy theatrics. And the mother also got it right. Also texted Johnny about this. Yeah, so Johnny's reaching out to her and saying, you know, what is going on here? Why, you know, why would you do this? It's throughout, you know, my, my life. And he's also talking about, you know, his, his children, his children's friends. I mean, seeing all this, it's like, why? And again, the mom comes back. Her lawyer told her she had to, and she had to today. Now, that to me is absolutely ridiculous because lawyers give advice and clients make decisions. Amber is an adult and she could hear advice. Even if the lawyer said, I strongly recommend, Amber would make a decision. But here it's being portrayed as if this lawyer is making the decisions and we just don't do that. So again, another attempt to deflect and avoid responsibility by now blaming her own lawyer for doing this. Right, well, part of me wonders if, if Amber told the parents this and the parents just believe it, right? Because... It's also just weird. She, when you see this mother, the mother's text, please don't pass this on to, to her if you ever talk to her again. Like, they're scared of her, too. <laughs> like, it's really telling how they're sort of writing this and trying to just, please, please don't use what I've told you for, from my heart against me. Please. Like, she's pleading with him yeah. to not reveal the truth of what she's been told by Amber, right? Which is, like, to keep this secret. And it, it makes me wonder if it's even more grandiose, these lies of Amber, you know, like, instilling in the parents. Oh, no, I had to. The lawyers told me to. The lawyers told me to. And they're just yeah. buying it, potentially, right? Well, that's it. It seems like he had a very good relationship with her parents and, uh, you know, to his credit and that Amber then is doesn't want to look bad because she can't ever do anything wrong or look bad. So now she has to deflect and saying like, oh, yeah, well, obviously she went and got this restraining order, but she was forced. I guess this is another hostage situation where she was taken by the lawyer and forced to do something against her will. She didn't look like she was doing anything against her will when she walked out of that courthouse. Mm -mm. And, and again, she could have said, hey, lawyer, if you want to do this, I, do I really need to be there? No, you really don't need to be there. So then what happens is, is that, you know, the, the public and Johnny's fans start seeing all this stuff and, and criticizing her to saying like, okay, you're going in for an order of protection. Fine, if that's what you think you need. But do you need a Range Rover and three <laughs> penthouses and $50,000 a month? Yeah. Like, what are you doing? And so... She she then in light of know, a coordinated and false and negative media campaign depicting my attempt my attempts uh, as being financially motivated, which they were. They absolutely were. That's, again, another red flag, right? Of, oh, so this you're you're scared for your life, but you want all this money and all these things is is usually a bad look. No, Christopher. Well, that's it. I mean, it, it's usually if you're needing protection, you go in and you ask for what you need and nothing more. And here it's like, OK, I'm, I'm so scared. I need to flee in the in a you know, high powered <laughs> SUV. Oh, God. 
Uh, and I need three penthouses, not just. I know, you know I need three one, penthouses you know. to save. It's it's, uh, it's I know it's not funny, guys, but my God. So she misused the. Here we go. Misused the protection design of victims abused. Obtained a restraining order against Johnny Depp when he was in Spain. Had no chance to defend himself. It was a further act of her by Amber against Johnny. It, it, it's it's true, and you put it together very eloquently and 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 correctly. I mean. This is why we don't believe her, Christopher. There's there's so many countless examples of this, but this is where it really all triggered. And I think it's an important one to, to recollect because it set the tone, right? Well, the thing is, what is so offensive to me um, is how she is harming other people who need protection. So she harmed the Me Too movement, just like Richard Watkins, that uh, entertainment lawyer, explained. The whole point of Me Too was a change in society to don't blame the victim, support the victim, believe the victim. Right. So she took advantage of that. And now what is other people who are who are coming forward now saying, well, I, I'm afraid now to come forward because nobody's going to believe me. They're going to think I'm an Amber Heard. So she hurt the Me Too movement. She hurt victims by also then abusing the court process that we have, we basically suspend people's due process rights and allow without any real notice, any opportunity for sure to respond. Oh, you say you need a protective order? Boom, here's a protective order. Because we, if people need protection, they need it immediately, not in three weeks or three months when they prove up their claim. She's also hurt those people who need access to the courts. Right. So she's doing more damage to the system, not just to Johnny. So that's what's infuriating. And um, but, yeah, I think it's important for us to go back and look at some of these incidents because it tells us about her character. It confirms what Dr. Curry said about her personality traits, that this is somebody right. who's not going to take responsibility. Everything's histrionic, blown out of proportion, and there's never any responsibility taken. And she will lie anytime she needs to and it's the lawyers it's never her fault it's the lawyers and even her own family sort of playing along terrified to keep her stories straight it, it, it's it is entirely frustrating uh, another fantastic thread by mr christopher melcher if you want to follow more of these follow us on twitter guys you know how to find me but let's go follow christopher melcher at under ca underscore divorce over on twitter he's been doing more of these and we will keep uh, documenting uh, but if you want him first and engage with some of the stuff and watch these articles and clips firsthand make sure you go give him a follow thanks to everybody who already did and while you're here go hit that subscribe button hit the bell for all alerts and smash that like button uh, christopher could any of this come up should it have come up in the court of law final thoughts and sort of your is this a part of her credibility check for the jury or do you think this is well, even yeah come up? and you know and the re one of the reasons why i want to debunk this is that uh, you know there's a concern i don't know if the if the virginia jury has heard about a restraining order but some might conclude that some judge in los angeles carefully examined the facts and made a conclusion that she needed protection that didn't happen right and so, you know, they may want to go into some of the detail. I know they did with Laura Wasser's testimony to say, like, yeah, we didn't really get any notice. So they did cover some of that to argue later. Um, but it's again, it's 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 a further manipulation of the system. And this is abuse. I mean, the, the things we've heard on tape that Amber saying to Johnny is is wretched and heartbreaking. But now she's using the whole legal system to abuse him further. And you could see in, in the in the messages, he's pleading with her parents and he's absolutely devastated and and thinking about his kids and saying, you know, how can you how can she do this to my children? And for and, the mom, I still am sort of shocked at the mom. Please, 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 please don't tell her I told you. Oh, just the, the amount of gaslighting and just everyone out of fear of how Amber will react is so telling to me. Uh, that even her own parents are afraid to do it. The parents should be the ones sm smacking her, you know, sense into her. And instead, they're afraid to even tell her the truth or tell Johnny the truth uh, and just make more excuses on her behalf. Johnny appears to be stuck in a dire situation where if he stays to have the fights, he's fearful of the physical violence. And when he escapes them, Amber appears to berate and insult him as being cowardly and unmanly. Well, I was a ball, piece of shit. Yeah, well, that's what, what I recall hearing is as I'm getting Johnny out is, yeah, just fuck the guys, you fuck like you always do. And I did call you pussy. So, again, I said I was sorry for calling you one name for every time 
I did not call you in, in Toronto. I did not call you. No, I did not. I did not call you a coward. You have the tapes, yes, yes. Yes, I will. I did not call you that in Toronto. I have called you that before, but for everything, every time you heard you're so obsessed that you got called, and I'm so sorry, that must be so tough that you got called that one name. Even Johnny's son, Jack, seemed like fair game for Amber to use to insult Johnny and highlight his supposed unmanliness. Oh, to God. Oh, to God. Jack's stepfather teaches him more about being a man than he's a f***ing near f***ing nut. Deadbeat dad. Travis McGivern recalls some of the fights he witnessed. So it was typically, I'd get a text from Mr. Depp. I would go to penthouse three, either stay by the door as requested or in the kitchen. And then, I mean, it was just verbal, verbal arguments, yelling. It was typically Mr. Depp wanting to get out of there and trying to convince Miss Heard to, to let us leave. Okay, so let me go and you go and I'll speak to you in a couple hours, okay? Stop. Why are you saying stop? May I so, go? Please, it causes me so much stress when you leave, when you walk away from me with that. It's like you're, you don't understand how much worse you're making this. I can't believe this. Please, you're making it worse for me. Okay, I'm sorry for you. Please, I'm only trying to tell you so that you know you're causing me immense stress right now when you walk away like that. I haven't walked away and you're not saying goodbye. You won't let me leave. Let me leave. Oh yeah, I mean, lots of name calling, lots of... F-bombs, uh, you know. Who was the name calling directed at? So that was typically Miss Heard directing her feelings toward Mr. Depp. What do you recall Miss Heard saying in those instances? Oh dear. It would vary. And to be honest, I, I tried to not pay attention. I was just there to get Mr. Depp out of there. But there were times I've heard Miss Heard call him a <laughs> washed up, <laughs> deadbeat dad, name it. She, she's spewed it. In one of the audios, Johnny resigns himself to being called names like a coward for running from Amber's volatility, overstaying, and enduring its consequences. Indeed. Yeah. But if things get heated, yeah. and it looks like it's going somewhere nasty, <laughs> and the name going begins, and all that stuff, I've got to get away. Mm -hmm. Because it, I don't want to be ever in a situation again. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to stand and fight with you. I will I not. You can I call me a coward. I don't you want can call that. me anything you want, all those names do it, but I will not. The following disturbing audio depicts yet another example of Amber calling into question Johnny's manhood as an insult. It's revealed in the trial that it is from an instance when Amber follows Johnny to one of his other houses to resume the fight he escaped from in the penthouse. <laughs> That plate glass, that plate glass is too much to take. No, I'm sure she's... That plate glass is so disgusting. I'm sure she's great. I'm sure she's great. What else are you doing? Oh, come on. Come on. Lay it on me. What else? What else other thing do you want to add? You f***ing lying piece of shit. Oh, no, I want to know. Amber Heard is even a couple of times when I did escape and I got to my house five minutes later she would arrive she would arrive in her nightgown screaming in the parking lot in front of in front of my house uh, screaming to high heavens it would be four in the morning three in the morning it was ludicrous uh, it was it was so uh, it was out of control it was uncontrollable yeah, Wait, is there no other place for you to run in your 15 in your house to go run? Come on, go be a real married man. Go do the way that a man does. Go run to the next house. Every man does. Go. Run away. I don't care. You're a fucking ridiculous clown. You panic. Hard. It's hard. Screwing everybody else over. I tried. That's what I do. Johnny asks Amber to leave, informing her that her Uber has arrived, which prompts her to taunt him, saying that she will stay longer instead, and that he needs to take the Uber to run away. She would sarcastically ask him whether he ran out of places to run to in his 15 other houses. Then she would proceed to challenge him to run away like a man would do, again pointing out his supposed unmanliness. <laughs> 
<laughs> and we got everybody out here almost oh, you're right. You're right. I'm I've sorry. You're right. You gotta figure it out. You don't yeah. have to figure out what you have to offer <laughs> as opposed to going out and getting your kicked out. You're right. That's what I do. Lots of the full audio of this consists of Johnny attempting to reason with Amber about wanting to avoid fights and her taunting him about running away from them. Except this time, she doesn't do it in the way their couple's therapist described as jackhammer speech. She instead uses a trenchant, sarcastic speech with some villain-like bursts of manic laughter that appear designed to drown Johnny's relaxed way of talking. Ms. Heard had a Jack Hammer style of talking. She was very amped up. He had trouble talking at a similar pace. That was the sound that I had gotten very used to. The, the raising of the voice to excommunicate anything that I had to say about uh, the situation. He was cut off a lot, and so he was really overwhelmed. In the middle of Amber's hysteria, Johnny even ventures to give her life advice about the image she puts out versus the real one. You're the most spoiled <laughs> and you got everybody out here almost oh, full, but it's right. the last you're one. Right. I've been sorry. here a lot longer you're than right. you. You're right. You gotta figure it out. You don't you have can't. Figure out what you have to offer as opposed to going out and getting your kids out. You're right, that's what I do. Amber, on another occasion, asks Johnny's help with her anger, then tells Johnny that she becomes human cancer and way harder to reason and rationalize with when he retreats for longer than a few minutes. Man, when you start, when you start talking, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's pretty. It's call it out, call me out, and help me. I will, I will try. I will try to help you. If I try to help you, and I can help you, but I leave. If I try to help you, and I can't help you, say, baby, taking an hour, I'm in the office. If you want to talk, don't come get me. Otherwise, I'll come check on you in an hour. That would be really helpful. Right? Say an hour. you just say, it will, you know, it, uh, I promise if you resume this, I just need to know that we will talk about it. Otherwise, I'm dealing with cancer. I'm dealing with something that just festers and it gets worse and worse. So you have to realize that, it, you know, in that kind of situation, a few minutes is fine, but then after a certain point, it becomes way worse and become way harder to reason, to rationalize what you become. That human cancer state is what seems to play out in the audio with the unsettling laughter. <laughs> you got everybody almost oh, you're right. You're right. A recording reveals that at least on one occasion, Amber threw Johnny out in anger for simply thinking that he might run away from a potentially volatile situation. You're about to f split. I don't want to feel like that. You made me feel meaningless. Threw me out of the bed, room. Yeah, why wouldn't I? If I know that that you're about to split, I mean that's what I'm saying. You always split. About to split. You always split. So that's why would I mean I do blame myself for my actions. I was laying in bed I watching television, man. I, I was laying in bed watching television. I if he splits and escapes, Amber admitted to chasing after him. There is an audio where he appears to be running away from an angry Amber as she is yelling at him in the distance. In one instance, Johnny sounds shaken as she tells him to come closer to her. Come here. Please come here. Please come here. I'm not insulting you. I have not been insulting you. I love you. Johnny, what do you need me to do? I love you. Stop. Don't smack me on the ear again. Don't smack my ear again. So resound to my ear. You like that? The contrast is striking in the recordings. Amber wants to be able to be mad, wants Johnny to be there for it, and not retreat when she's mad. You need to let me be able to be mad. Sometimes you're gonna make me mad. I'm a human, I cannot live where it's like. Whereas Johnny advocates for peace and retreating. Look, we, we've got to get together as individuals and as a couple, because I love you. I do not want to leave you 
do not want to divorce, I do not want you out of my life, I just want peace. Yeah, Matt, it happens. It happens. Yes, I know. It happens often. Often, when Johnny advocates for retreating, Amber retorts with objections. I don't want to instigate any fights. I do not want to fight anymore. Say we're having an argument and you get mad. An argument hard. Yes, but say we're having an argument and you get mad. And even the example where she agrees that one hour cooldown would help her with her anger, she panics shortly after and reduces the period to a few minutes after which she says she becomes human cancer that's hard to reason or rationalize with. I try to help you, I can't help you. Say, so baby, taking an hour, I'm If you want to talk, don't come get me, otherwise I'll come check on you in an hour. That, that would be really helpful. All right? So Even now, if you just say it will, you know, uh, I promise I'm to resume this. I just need to know that we will talk about it. Otherwise, I'm dealing with cancer. I'm dealing with something that just festers. And it gets worse and worse. So you have to realize that, it, you know, in that kind of situation, a few minutes is fine. But then after a certain point, it becomes way worse. It's going to become way harder to reason, to rationalize. Like, it become, Amber seems to try everything to convince Johnny to stay and not retreat when she becomes unhinged. In what sounds like a manipulative tactic, Amber even tries to guilt trip him about being wealthy and having multiple houses that he retreats to. If things get physical, we have to separate. We have to be apart from one another, whether it's for an hour or 10 hours or a day we must there can be no physical violence i agree about the physical violence but separating for a day or I'm, night I'm, and taking a night off from our marriage no 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 it just means it opens up and listen i'm just giving examples it, it could be three minutes it could be two weeks i'm just you know saying what you agree? you know what i mean i'm not saying anything negative i know all i'm saying is we need to take whatever time we need you need or i need this is the thing that makes me feel unsafe and unsafe to be honest this is what makes me not trust What's up? It's the, that there's like... Walking away, going to a corner. No, it's like, oh, go and take the time you need, take the time you need. Okay, fine, every time I get out of here, I can go split. Except for, oh wait, I don't have my own place to go split to. No, Amber, stop. You no, know, it makes me think I should. It makes me, you know, I, I don't have a place I'd go. I don't have a, I don't have to go to a hotel, you know? And I don't have the funds to do that. I mean, it's... Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Anything up, God, if I yell, if I up, ever. Ditched. That's not marriage. You know, most people don't have two, three houses they can go to. It's always on in your house. And you won't split it. And if I said, this is my house and my house only. Kind of. But I know no. yesterday I... No, it's our fucking house. Amber's justification for chasing Johnny around and bombarding him with messages when he escapes from fights is that she tries to prevent him from using mind-altering substances because, according to her, he's surrounded by enablers. On the page, you write a long series of text messages to Mr. Depp that don't get a response. Come groan. Please come home. Be the man. Please, no fight. I promise. Please, no fights. Please, just pick up. Please call me. I need to talk to you. Please, Johnny, don't force me to be something else to you. This is taking me for granted and I can never stop before this turns into something far darker. Describing yourself in that text message, right? The exact opposite. I'm trying to interrupt him starting a new cycle where he starts using again. He's I'm not responding to you, to... Ms. Heard. There were, there were even a couple of times when I did escape and I got to my house. Five minutes later, she would arrive. She would arrive in her nightgown screaming in the parking lot in front of in front of my house uh screaming to high heavens and it'd be four in the morning three in the morning it was ludicrous I, it was it was uh it was out of control it was uncontrollable the proof that came out in the trial suggests that she wants him to partake in drugs and alcohol this is a text message that you sent to mr Depp, correct that is correct and you write quote hey baby bring up something to drink and or a joint I'm in if you are. See you in a minute. And then the next day you went to Coachella and consumed MDMA and mushrooms. Right, Ms. Heard? I did. 
In fact, Amber made drug consumption an integral part of their wedding day plans, as she writes, after dance party, drugs, and music. Was she intoxicated at any time during the wedding weekend? Yes. There was a large consignment of wine that had been delivered to the house at the start of the visit. Many cases that I had to store, had to find a place to store. Generally speaking, on a day-to-day, -day, about one or two bottles of red wine were consumed per day. I think that's fair to say. Did you ever observe Mr. Depp drink any of the wine? No, I didn't. I didn't see Mr. Herp, Mr. Depp, Depp consume any alcohol at, during that time in London. Did you ever observe Ms. Heard drink any of the wine? Yes, I did. Regularly? Daily. As uh, she was drinking quite a bit. And, oh, she, uh, says she, doesn't, she says she doesn't like to get drunk. She testified to that in the UK court. Was bragging about how many boxes of wine she orders and, and likes to drink. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Oh, <laughs> it's public. At that point, I said to her, okay, listen, I've never asked you this before. How about you stop drinking? How about you get sobriety and share this sobriety with me to support me and help me through this? What did she say to that? No. No. <laughs> she said no. She said she didn't have a problem. I did a lot of changing to support his sobriety. I tried everything that I could possibly think of. But you drink wine around Mr. Tapp on a regular basis, correct? I did drink wine. Ms. Hurd wasn't the only one who had a problem with your drinking, correct? So if anyone had a problem with my drinking at any time in my life, it was me. The only person that I've ever abused in my life is myself. Um, I'll write you a check for the extra sip I took. Is that okay? Stitch. Piece of I only brought it up. Mm-mm. You did. You said don't drink my wine. That's mine. I didn't say that. Oh, you did. I said I didn't think you were looking for any more. After that, I had a conversation with Nurse Debbie and with Dr. Kipper. I told them that she had denied me the meds when I was in need, and uh, I think we have to leave the island. She can't be with me while I'm going through the rest of this detoxification. So we went back to Los Angeles, and then I asked Miss Hurd if she would please allow me five days, seven days, whatever it took, to get done with, finished with the rest of this, 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 this horrific detox and the pain. Did Miss Hurd give you that time? <laughs> she did, reluctantly, yes. I was, uh, I was immediately accused of throwing her out. Later in the process, Amber would reveal a harbored fear of being thrown out from the luxury penthouses along with her group. When I was proposed that I would have to leave, I'd be kicked out, be evicted, so Rock and Josh and everybody, evicted within 21 days. I was accused of um, abandoning her. I was accused of not appreciating all that she had done to get me to this point where I was, which was kind of an interesting argument for me. Uh, you ignore everything. You take me for granted. You ignore everything that I do for you. You, uh, you do not fight for me, and then you want to sit here and make me sound so terrible to be around. You, you don't, I, everything I've already explained. No, ten fight, minutes no fight for you, I don't understand. Is you never, me? ever do the work, put in the work. If we're arguing about something, you don't ever try to get to the bottom of it, figure out, make the peace. You want to make it easy on you, so you split. I begged her, please, can I, can I get a place at the Beverly Hills Hotel? I'll get you and your friends a bungalow at the Beverly Hills Hotel where you can all stay together and have a grand old flag. You can have fun, you can do whatever you want, and you don't have to sit around Mr. Uh, Shaky. She wasn't happy about it, but uh, it was very necessary. So I, she did eventually leave for about five five days or so. You leave how you get another room, you get a flight, when, things like that. And you ask, we, and, and we getting me a room, I mean, getting another room at a hotel is just the same thing. And you can go, I can't meet those demands, I can't do it, or you can Promise me, so I have a modicum of safety, I have a modicum of respect, a little tiny sh 
sliver of f and makes me far more stressed and far more angry. When you take off, you use it to hurt me. It's a tool now that you use. And come on, don't you can't you can't act like you don't do it knowing it's gonna make me mad. I'm not. It's it's, it, it's not to get you mad. It's not to get. It's just to get out of a bad situation while it's happening before it gets worse. In Australia, when we had the big fight where I lost the tip of my finger, at least five bathrooms and two bedrooms I went to. Two, two. To avoid talking to me. To escape. To escape. bring up something to drink and or a joint, in quote, you were asking him to bring those things for other people, not him to, to use, correct? I'm not saying that. I'm you were upset that Mr. Depp was late to your 30th birthday, weren't you? I was. You knew Mr. Depp had a scheduled business meeting or a money meeting that evening, right? No, I knew he said he did. I didn't know if he had one. Addicts lie all the time. So you didn't trust him? I took it with a big grain of addict salt. Not only that Amber attempts to paint Johnny as an aggressive drugged monster, but also as a manipulative lying addict. Like when he was late for her 30th birthday after a crisis meeting he had about finances. Did you overhear Amber say anything to Johnny from the moment he got there until you left. I said that she was speaking to him quietly at the dinner table while we were having the party. But you didn't hear any words that she said? I didn't hear what the specific words were, no. Johnny describes how she treated him when he arrived late to her birthday. Occasionally she would tear herself from the conversation that she was in and lean towards me. I was, I was sitting to her, <clears throat> to her right and I would get a quick ear full of, I can't believe you've done this to me on my birthday. I can't believe I'm so embarrassed, um, you know, which I found odd because I'd kept her informed all, all, all day. And the last text that I'd received was a request for wine and marijuana. Amber explained the text where she asked him if he's in to use weed and drink alcohol as a possible peace offering that she's not going to bite his head off if he comes to her birthday party. Bring up something to drink and or a joint, in quote. You were asking him to bring those things for other people, not him to, to use, correct? I'm not saying that. I'm saying I don't remember the context of these text messages, but if I had to guess, that seems like a probable, I mean, a likely guess. Either way, no matter if it was in reference to bringing up something from the utility apartment that he would have passed if he truly was on the way home soon and would be passing on the way there, or if it was uh, a means for me to say, hey, I'm not going to bite your head off if you come here. Please just don't flake on my birthday party. Either way, I don't remember. The exact moment Amber Heard lost the case versus Johnny Depp. Fans have been constantly pointing out many vast inconsistencies as they pour over the information that's been presented in court, especially that coming from Amber Heard, and it's very clear to any spectator of the case that Amber has messed up big time during her testimony, and that too on several occasions, which may hand Johnny Depp and his team victory over her in the trial. But what exactly are those mistakes? Keep watching and let's find out. How's it gone down so far? Heard and Depp have narrated a very disturbing picture of their brief yet chaotic marriage to the whole world. Testimony on both sides has been painful and draining. Heard's attorneys really dug into Depp for hours on his alleged substance abuse, while his witnesses made suspicious claims about Heard's histrionic personality disorder. Her team has revealed pictures of her bruised face, busted lip, and torn off hair on the couple's bedroom floor. Depp has confessed to drawing threatening messages on their walls in his own blood, Whereas in the text messages, we see him apologizing for spraying rage at her during one of his blackouts, as well as saying he hoped Heard's rotting corpse was decomposing in the bleeping trunk of a Honda Civic. He has since expressed remorse at having sent those texts, but the damage is done, and even though most of the evidence is on his side, this does look really bad. Video proof 
Among the most obvious proof in Depp's favor is the affairs Amber had with two big celebs. The actor's defense made the jury view elevator footage of the actress having late-night meetings with Elon Musk and James Franco, and that too in Depp's own penthouse. It was expected that both celebrities will go and testify on the trial, but they've been no-shows in Depp's favor. Both of these guys were proved to be having their affairs with her right when the actor was married to her. To further the evidence, there are moments in the elevator clips where Amber doesn't have clothes on and she is only wearing a blanket. She displays physical affection to Musk and also Franco, but more mildly. This new evidence proves that Heard was not faithful to Dupp and most of her accusations could be rendered useless as a result. To make matters worse, there are even more incriminating accusations from Depp that we are now just hearing of. The video of Heard with Musk and Franco is yet another proof that perhaps many of her other statements aren't true either, and they have also been proven so. Let's take a look at the rest of her claims that didn't hold up. A testimony from Heard's ex-nurse. Amber's former nurse, Erin Falatai, was also called to testify in court. Falatai was asked about text messages she had gotten from Heard, showing bruises that the actress had on her face. When asked to voice her thoughts, Falatai did warn us that she's not exactly an expert, but she had no idea what the color on Amber's face was. Falatai was also asked if Heard had ever expressed any sort of fear of depth to her, which she said she couldn't remember. She did, though, recall a time when Heard's sister mentioned that the actress was suicidal. A slip-up that could cost Heard $50 million. The moment Heard knew she'd really lost was when she literally opened the way for Depp to win the defamation case through a careless remark. On day two of her testimony, Heard talked about an altercation with Depp where he was allegedly being physically abusive with her, and at one point she made a reference to Kate Moss, who is Depp's former girlfriend. Heard claimed that during the altercation she hit Depp to save her sister Whitney because Johnny was allegedly trying to push her down the stairs. The reason she mentioned Kate Moss is because of an old rumor that Depp once pushed Moss down the stairs back when they were a couple. It's apparent in the moment when Amber mentioned Kate's name, not only Johnny, but his entire team couldn't believe it. You could see the smiles on their faces they were trying to hide, because she'd really messed up and it just made their jobs much, much easier. How this works out for Depp The reason why this is probably going to be a big deal for Depp and could help his victory in the case is because he can now invite Kate as a rebuttal witness. As the name suggests, a rebuttal witness is a witness who's called to rebut or refute an already given testimony, and the reason we know Kate would refute Amber's testimony is because there's never been any proof whatsoever of Depp pushing Kate or hurting her in any way. Contrary to Amber's testimony, even when the two split up, Kate, much like the rest of Johnny's exes, always had nothing but generally nice things to tell people about him, and she never once accused him of being physically aggressive or abusive in any way. In fact, Kate claimed that nobody ever took care of her the way Johnny did while they were together. In her 2012 interview with Vanity Fair, Kate said that there's nobody who was ever really able to care for her the way Depp did. To make things clearer, Kate even explained that Johnny helped her manage her fame and gave her advice that she still holds close to her heart to this day. Johnny and Kate dated between 1994 and 1997. Depp's fans are now saying Amber pretty much completely ruined her own case by name-dropping Kate Moss, and they had a field day clowning her on Twitter. Another Twitter user pointed out that since Kate Moss has entered the chat, it means that now every past relationship of Amber's is also fair game. A fan of Depp's even uploaded a clip of the actor leaving the court after Heard's testimony and pointed out the obvious smile of satisfaction on his face. The makeup kit that never was. Amber's very first blunder happened way before her testimony, before either of the stars even made it to the stand, actually. Fans viewing the televised trial were out in full force ready to dissect everything as they seriously doubted an opening statement. Heard's attorney, Elaine Bredhoff, said the actress had used makeup to conceal her bruises throughout the course of her relationship with Depp. This is what Amber carried in her purse for the whole relationship with Johnny Depp, according to Bredhoff. She held a makeup palette aloft in the courtroom as she said this. In response to the statement, Milani Cosmetics released a video on TikTok, which stated that their Conceal and Perfect All-in-One Correcting Kit, which is the one Amber reportedly used to cover her bruises, which were caused by domestic violence, and the same one her lawyer was holding, actually wasn't even in circulation during her and Depp's relationship. The Correcting Kit launched in December of 2017. Milani's caption on the video, which went viral and clocked up millions of views within hours, was also used as evidence of a mistruth across social media. Remember how the alleged abuse was around 2014 to 2016? From the looks of it, the two got divorced in 2016, and the palo was here in late 2017. But after that, a source close to her claimed that the lawyer's words were being interpreted wrongly. Breedhoff, however, did not claim that the specific brand or kit was the exact same one used by Amber. A user on the internet tweeted in response to the news that Milani Cosmetics literally went out of their way to prove Amber Heard lied in court about using their product to cover bruises because there's no way that happened, considering all the facts given. The Dog Incident 
On the very first day of her testimony, May 4th, Heard recalled an instance when Depp allegedly held his dog out the window of a moving car and howled. According to her narrative, everyone in the car just froze then. No one did anything, according to her, as she took the stand, saying that she was too torn over what to do. She said she didn't want to cause the actor to react or drop the dog. The dog was a Yorkie called Boo. She described the incident as a chilling moment. She said she eventually got him to pull his arms and the dog back into the car. Since her testimony, video footage has been posted on TikTok in which she was seen smiling while holding a tiny dog by the open window of a moving vehicle. Obviously, this is not going to fly. Animal cruelty is absolutely unforgivable in the court of public opinion. A person on Twitter was seriously angered at this and tweeted that Amber Heard stated that Johnny was the one who held their dog out of a moving car window. So you can clearly see for yourself what the truth is. They also pointed out that if she could pin the blame on Johnny for something she did herself and lied about it so blatantly, who's to say she wasn't the perpetrator of the abuse she pinned on him herself? Whatever the results of the case, we know who's the winner in the court of public opinion. Johnny Depp, an insecure husband? Amber also claimed that Depp was so jealous and insecure that she'd have to avoid doing any scenes of a sexual nature for fear of upsetting him. She even claimed that she would have to bargain with him every time she received a script with such scenes. She further stated that Johnny's intense monitoring of her increased her awareness of how she was dressing, what kind of behavior she had, and of course, she had to see if there were any sex scenes in the film she took on. She further stated that this led to her keeping kissing scenes to a minimum, adding that she would also often change the wardrobe to tone things down. These changes in her lifestyle didn't happen all at once. It was so gradual that she didn't notice until it was too late. In response to these claims, a fan shared a video clip of Amber in the final dance scene of the 2015 movie Magic Mike XXL, in which she played Zoe, who was seen enjoying a pretty raunchy dance from Channing Tatum's titular lead, Michael Lane, which included him gyrating all over her during a performance. When promoting the movie at the time of its release, Heard was asked by Metro what it was like having Tatum all up in her face with his crotch, which led her to respond with, I was brought in, we shot it, and it was a lot of fun. Even though it looked spontaneous, it's actually a very highly choreographed and practiced dance. So clearly, Johnny couldn't have been that upset over the whole thing. The self-contradictions in her case just keep piling up. Let's take a look at yet another mistake the Aquaman actress made in court. Heard as a musician. When she testified about one of the fights that she and Depp had allegedly gotten into, jurors were given a visual aid in the form of aftermath photos as per Insider. Now as to the question of what was in those photos, in one there were smashed windows, another one featured a guitar, reportedly Depp's favorite guitar, with what looked like streaks of blood on it. When questioned, Amber denied that she played any instruments. After this, a fan shared a clip of her strumming a guitar and singing in a small clip her movie One More Time, which debuted on Stars Digital back in 2016. The case appears to be becoming not only extremely ridiculous, but also transparent at this point. It's become extremely difficult to trust any of the actress's claims. With reliable and consistent evidence coming in from Depp's side, and inconsistent and dramatized evidence from Heard's, anyone can see where matters are clearly headed. Amber has had too many of her claims disproven and challenged. It's hard to imagine her coming out of this with the settlement money.